Hi and welcome to BND TV. We have created a series of talks for you entitled The Secrets of Sleep and Success. We are on a mission to empower 1 million people or more harness the awesome power of sleep to dramatically improve the quality of their lives. We hope you enjoy. Hi everyone and welcome to our channel BND TV for one more episode of Secrets of Sleep and Success. Today I have got with me Sorab Godrej who is currently studying at the Harvard Business School in America. He has worked with uh, Honeywell Aerospace in the US and of course he has worked with Godrej Industries. Uh, uh, Sorab has read our book and he really loved it and uh, he wants to ask a few questions. So welcome Sorab and please go ahead. It's a pleasure to be here uh, Bawa. Thank you so much. Uh and the first question I have is uh is is on consistency I think. Uh you know, uh you hear from so many people about how important it is to have a consistent time uh when you go to sleep uh and to stick to that. Uh it would be great if you could uh shed some more light on that and uh it you know we I've heard people say that if you're very consistent about it sometimes you can uh maybe get by with a slightly less sleep uh but i wasn't sure if that's true so it would be great to talk about having a consistent time uh that you set to go to sleep all right so you know our bodies are creatures of habit they love routine and if you think about it you know you go back in time millions of years we have evolved uh for millions of years we kind of followed the rhythms of nature no when it is morning we yes. woke up when it is night we went to sleep certain times of the day we ate food right so that habit of being regular with all the things we do is kind of ingrained into the body and it functions best uh, at its most optimal when you are consistent uh with whatever habit you know even if it is uh, let's not even talk about sleep even if it is studying Uh, or uh, you know working on a presentations or 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 preparing for something important in your life you will notice that there are times in the day when you are most alert when you are most productive and if you stick to those times you will find that uh, your ability to deliver is like 10x 20x compared to other times right yes so, absolutely yes consistency is a very big uh, player in the sleep game and uh, the more consistent you are with the time you sleep and the time you wake up and we've gone to gone into it in great detail in our book sleep your way to success uh, where we talk about the science behind why this is uh, why this is the case uh, but uh, long story short a consistent bedtime and a consistent wake up time will uh, create a really beautiful sleep experience for you and like you mentioned uh, if you are super consistent most of the days once in a while if you you know watch a late night show or you hang around with friends and have a little party it's not going to affect you uh, at all really but it's yeah. only once in a while yeah yes okay yeah that's not, that's not once every two days that's very important to note uh, thank you very much yes i've also found that you know uh, consistency helps in so many a uh, different things uh, even even when in studying i find that i'm most productive early in the morning when i wake up so that is usually uh, the time that i choose to study and uh, if i'm consistent with that it, it only keeps getting better and better exactly uh, uh that's the other thing that sort of we mentioned mm -hmm. getting better and better that's exactly what it is the more consistent you are with a particular time you will find that your body your brain your mind kind of aligns to that time and then when you do the stuff that you were supposed to do in that time uh basically your entire system is uh, ready set go you know uh, yes. so it just just makes a lot of sense to be super consistent with whatever it is you are doing mm -hmm. fantastic yeah uh, one of the things that uh, that you mentioned uh, in the book is the effect of blue and white light uh -huh. and what that does uh, to sleep and you know i've i've read a lot about how it suppresses melatonin production uh now uh do you, do you think that there is uh enough scientific uh, data to back this and furthermore uh, uh 
the question I had was that you know many people have started these glasses that supposedly block the blue light. And one of my friends has, uh, has done a startup on this and he's the market leader in India now. Uh, so uh, what are your thoughts on these glasses? And also in the book, you mentioned the apps that prevent the blue and white light from getting emitted. How helpful do you think these uh, tools are? You know, I have a friend uh, who stays right here in Bangalore, Ashram, and he was having a lot of trouble going to sleep. Uh, you know, uh, so what he would do is he would watch football matches <laughs> on his phone mm -hmm. because he couldn't sleep. Yeah. And that would only create the problem even worse, make the problem even worse uh, because yeah. he's constantly bombarded by that white and blue light from the phone, right? Yeah. So I just took his phone and I put, you know, it started that night shift app. It was an mm -hmm. iPhone. So I just started the night shift app and took the slider all the way to warm. And uh, I said, now you do what you want to do. And uh, the next morning he says, you know, I still watch the match, but this time instead of feeling wide awake, I started feeling sleepy while watching yeah. the match. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead of sleeping at 3 a.m., I could actually manage to go to sleep by almost 1 a.m., which is a huge deal in just one night, right? So yeah. uh, it, is, it is a really big thing that the white and blue uh, light needs to be eliminated, blocked somehow or the other at least three hours, three to four hours before your bedtime. So typically when the sun sets, at least in India, uh, you know, we, we, we have this uh, sunset at a very convenient time, unlike in America, like uh, I remember I was in Atlanta and uh, it was 10.30 and it felt like it was 5 p.m. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I was just sitting with my friend in the car and I was saying, I'm feeling so hungry, but it's just evening. He said, no, Baba, you know, it's 10.30 in the night. That's why you're feeling so hungry. <laughs> <Yeah>. mm -hmm. <laughs> I, just landed in, I just landed into Atlanta. Got it. Um, so at least in India, we don't have to worry so much about, you know, crazy sunrise and sunset times. Uh, so simply... Um, ensuring that the white and blue light is blocked in some way or the other, mm -hmm. whether it is through changing the light fixtures in your house, whether it is by wearing the uh, blue light blocking uh, glasses, uh, whether it is by activating those apps on your phone or on your, even on your TV, by the way, yeah. uh, it will make a huge difference to the quality of your sleep. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I've been trying to avoid uh, using the phone three hours before going to sleep. And uh, yeah, the, just being consistent about that has been helpful too. Oh, wonderful. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm also very curious uh, about uh, your thoughts on, uh, you know, alcohol and caffeinated beverages. Uh, I, you mentioned it in the book. There's a common misconception about alcohol, you know, being able to knock you out, but that does not improve uh, the quality of your sleep. And in, in, in every art of living course that I've taken uh, during the time of the course, we're always told to uh, avoid any drinks with caffeine uh, and any alcohol, of course. Uh, so if you could talk a little bit about uh, what effect uh, these have on sleep and, uh, you know, if, and if, if somebody is going to consume uh, these uh, beverages, when should they be consumed uh, earlier in the day? So, yeah. So, yes, um, alcohol, is considered <laughs> uh, traditionally the number one remedy for going to sleep. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, it is a big myth uh, because what alcohol does it is it sedates you. And that's like equivalent to getting knocked on the head with a pan and fainting. Mm -hmm. You're not going to wake up after being knocked out, feeling fresh and rejuvenated and energized. You are going to wake up with grogginess and and a headache and God knows what else, right? That's exactly what happens with alcohol. When you have alcohol, it sedates you. It acts as a almost a, an anesthetic. You know, if uh, you know any of our viewers, if you have ever had gone under general anesthesia, the one thing you will realize when you come out of general anesthesia is you have no sense of time. You don't know whether you were out for like two hours, five hours, five days, five years. You have no idea. There's no sense of time when you are knocked out through anesthesia. Whereas when you have proper sleep, you kind of have an idea. Oh, I slept eight hours. I slept 10 hours. I had a long time, long sleep. I had a oh, very short sleep. You know, you have an idea of time. You have an idea of chronology. So alcohol basically suppresses that, which means it suppresses REM sleep 
which means that uh, you're going to have a lot of memory problems. You're going to not be able to make good decisions. Uh, you may have uh, terrible dreams, uh, all sorts of uh, unpleasant consequences can happen as far as sleep is concerned. Alcohol actually interferes with sleep. Hmm? Caffeine is another uh, monster. And, uh, you know, if you start talking about caffeine, it will, it will take an hour at least. And uh, we will, we have explored about caffeine in our book. And, uh, you know, I'm creating an online course uh, about sleep where we will go more deep into the effects of caffeine. Basically, caffeine mimics a particular molecule in our bloodstream called adenosine. And because of that, it creates an illusion of being awake. It's not real wakefulness. Your body is screaming, I need to sleep. And your brain is saying, I don't hear you. It's almost like that. So caffeine creates that. And uh, you will need more and more and more amount of caffeine for the same awakeness as you you know, as you continue your use of it. And, and that's like a drug. It's, 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 it's a drug, you know. You become addicted to ca uh, caffeine. Now, uh, so that, therefore it's not a good idea, basically. Mm -hmm. Now, if you ask me what is the best time to have the caffeine, I would say around 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, not first thing when you wake up. Uh, again, there is a lot of science behind it. And uh, we've gone gone into it in, in our book and we will go into it much more on the online power of sleep workshop. But uh, basically, if you have caffeine, uh, you know, a cup of tea or a cup of coffee at around 11 in the morning, uh, it will kind of keep you more alert and awake in the afternoon slump period. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you have it later in the day, uh, it can keep you awake at night. So if you have it early in the morning, uh, it's no, there is no need because your system is already uh, awake. You don't mm -hmm. need more awake to get awake. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Around 11 o'clock or so in the afternoon is the perfect time to have your caffeine, if at all you are having it, and never more than one or one or two glasses, never more than that. Uh, okay. And uh, that is a that is a kind of a biohack. Uh, if you have to have your cup of mm -hmm. coffee or have to have your cup of tea, have it at 11. Definitely not after two o'clock or three o'clock in the afternoon. Definitely not because then it will interfere with your uh, with your sleep in the night. Yes, uh, th that's very helpful. I always uh, make sure that I have it like around that time, uh, never after two, definitely because I'm quite sensitive to caffeine. So, uh, and I I I I'm guessing it would be the same for alcohol. You know, if you really feel like you have to consume it then probably at lunch time and, and not at dinner time right because that would absolutely not at dinner time if you have to have something and uh, you know i wouldn't say you should have it if you've done an out of living course you know to get the high you just do the sudarshan kriya you just meditate so, so you don't need to you know have it but uh, like if you have to have it the earlier you have it in the day the better got it so then your body can process it and get it out of your system before you go to sleep yeah uh, I, I was also very interested in learning a little bit more about the importance of having a continuous sleep. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we, we often talk about seven hours and eight hours. Uh, and, uh, you know, but a lot of us uh, like to nap during the day as well. We might take a one hour nap or maybe even longer. So, uh, but uh, is, is continuous sleep uh, favored over uh, making up for it during the day? Absolutely. Though I have to say that a half an hour afternoon nap is recommended highly recommended around between two o'clock and four o'clock yeah but later than four before two anyway you don't want to nap so mm -hmm. between two and four a half an hour nap is highly recommended it will refresh you it will you know kind of uh, recharge you for the evening ahead and you will not yawn your way through uh you know through a date with somebody yeah. <laughs> if you don't want uh, so a half an hour afternoon nap is great, but more than that will interfere with your sleep. Got it. Um, also, you said eight hours un uninterrupted sleep. It is not necessary that it is uninterrupted. Also, it can be about three four hours, and then maybe an hour or two of doing some work, and then again three four hours. That's called mm -hmm. biphasic sleep. It's, yeah. it's kind of a, a fallback to our ancestry as farmers. You know, we used to wake okay. up very early in the morning, do some morning chores, and then go back to bed until the sun rises. 
Yes, so I've read that. Mm -hmm. But eight hours night sleep is required, plus maybe about half an hour daytime napping is brilliant. Great, great, very helpful. Uh, and uh, I would also like to ask you a little bit, uh, you know, since the topic is sleep and success, you know, what are some of the studies that you have looked at that have shown people being more productive uh, after having a good sleep, showing improvements once people have had better sleep, uh, or if you could share uh, some, uh, you know, examples from the people that you've helped or your own experience of uh, improving productivity after getting the right quality and quantity of sleep. Yeah, I mean, uh, this whole book got written because of sleep. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, to do anything which is important in your life, you need energy, you need focus, you need, you need to be fresh, right? It's very difficult to do anything important if you've got brain fog. Uh, it's just not, not difficult. I would say it is impossible. Yes. And, uh, I went through a terrible bout of insomnia about five or six years ago. And I can tell you firsthand how terrible that is. Uh, I never had problems with sleep and suddenly I couldn't sleep. It was not really sudden, it crept up. But you know, when it finally happens, it, it feels sudden. And uh, it really, really compromised the quality of my life big time, uh, you know? And fortunately for me, I had meditation. I had the art of living techniques with me. So they kind of kept me functional and sane during that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I used that time to actually sit and research about sleep all the time in the night. I couldn't sleep. I would research about sleep. And what we have written in the book and what we are going to talk about in our Power of Sleep workshop, which will be online soon, is uh, a kind of a nichol, you know, mm -hmm. a kind of a, a, the, the, the essence of all those books and all those hundreds of websites that I went through uh, uh, to, to learn about sleep. And it is something that I have personally experimented on myself, as well as on a few hundred other people who, uh, you know, approached me saying, Baba, you're writing a book on sleep, you can't sleep, can you help us? So yeah. many, many, many people have benefited from the, you know, the techniques that we have talked in the book. And uh, without exception, every single person has said, uh, I, kind, I kind of got my health back. I feel myself again. Uh, I, I was just, you know, running on fumes, not even on reserve. And uh, now I'm feeling like, wow, it feels so great to be have, having a full tank, you know, of resources to, uh, to be able to do whatever I want to do. And uh, people have, uh, you know, two, three of my friends, I've even got promotions because their work became so good. People started noticing, hello, you know, you're, you're doing really great work. So uh, in all ways, uh, uh, some, some of uh, my, my uh, uh, clients who, who are students uh, started uh, scoring grades which they couldn't even imagine that they would get. So in, in all ways, regardless of what area of life they were in, whether they were students, housewives, uh, you know, uh, corporate professionals, business, small business owners, uh, without exception, they all reported back saying, uh, you have changed my life. Uh, I had never thought that sleep could make such a huge difference. That, that's really wonderful to hear. Uh, yes, and it, it, it's so wonderful that you and uh, the nation have taken the time to write this book and compile all of the learnings that uh, that you've received over the years uh, on sleep, which is you know one of the most important things in, in all of our lives, which we often take for granted. So thanks very much for that. You're welcome, sir. So I want to ask you a question now. Sir. Oh, of course. Being in the Harvard Business School, it is like top of the top of the top, right? I suppose so. Now, yeah, you know, when, when people tell me the same about IIT, <laughs> I also say the same thing. I <laughs> but uh, I had my own coping strategies uh, when I was a student in IIT and I, we talked about it in our book, Ready, Study, Go. Uh, I'm 100% sure that Harvard Business School is really uh, a stressful environment to be in. Uh, what is your, what are you, how do you cope? What, what, what is your secret source of success? Yes, I, I think that uh, getting enough sleep is, is certainly something that's very important. That, that, is, that is not always uh, possible because, you know, sometimes you have 
a day the next day where you have three cases and uh, you know a lot of assignments uh, to get done. Uh, but uh, like I, uh, I mentioned earlier, I've developed a habit of uh, getting work done in the morning. So I'll, I'll wake up early in the morning, well before classes start, and I'll get most of my reading done during that time, some of it the day before. Uh, but that really helps me because I'm most productive and I'm quicker uh, at, at that time. And then I think it's also, also I guess identifying your really productive time and doing your productive work in that time is mm -hmm. one big secret. Yes. Uh, that's very helpful. And I think another thing is uh, just uh, learning, uh, just discovering what your priorities are and prioritizing that as much as possible. Uh, at, at HBS, uh, you, you know, there's, uh, there's sort of three things that you kind of need to divide your time between. There's uh, reading cases, uh, there's going to parties and sleep. And they said you can only have uh, two of the three. So you have to choose which, <laughs> which two you want uh, to get. You can't have all three. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I think you, it, it, it's also a question of knowing what your priorities are and sticking to that. And there's, there's a lot of uh, fun things you can do, a lot of clubs that you can join, a lot of uh, fun activities, uh, you know, tennis club, uh, golf, uh, all of that. So you need to figure out what, uh, what is most important to you and, uh, you know, sp spend time on the things that you enjoy. So I guess, I guess another, mm -hmm. from what I hear from you is the ability to say no comes only when you are clear about what you want. Absolutely, yes. Right? So so if you're really clear about what you want, it's so easy to say yes and no. Right? That's very true. That, yeah. that is one of the ways I coped because mm -hmm. like you said, you know, I sat and thought about it and said, okay, what is it that I want to get out of this? And mm -hmm. if it was in alignment with that, I would say, yes, of course, I'm doing it. And if it was not, yeah. I would say, no, I'm sorry. And Absolutely. that, uh, you know, that that confusion of whether I should do or I should not do and, and that FOMO, am, am I missing out some, some, on, on something, all that when it is eliminated, uh, I think life becomes so much simpler. No? Yes, it becomes much simpler when you have clarity about what's important to you and then you can, you can focus on that. So that really helps. Cool. Thank you, Saurabh. That was Thank a you. lovely little chat we had and uh, I'm so glad you enjoyed our book. And uh, uh, please uh, let all your friends and family know about, about this book. And I, I really hope, you know, Dinesh and I are on a mission to empower 1 million people or more to sleep better and therefore function better. You know, you know that when, when you sleep better, you, you are healthier, you are, you are smarter, uh, you are younger, uh, and you become irresistibly attractive also. So that's mm -hmm. the party part, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, Thank you. So, yeah. So I, I'm so glad that uh, we had this little, little talk. And thanks for, for giving, giving me your time. It, it, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and comment below. And remember to subscribe to our channel BND TV so that every time we put out a video, you get a notification right into your inbox. Remember to hit that bell button though, because that's when the magic happens.